Welcome everyone. Uh, this is Kasia and I'm happy to see so many of you have decided to join today's webinar. And today we're going to talk about Bave Days. Uh, okay, so um, before we start, I'm really curious and I must ask you this question. Uh, have you got any children? How many? At what age? Uh, just chat to answer that question. Uh -huh. well, uh, before you answer that question, I'll tell you that I'm a mother of two, uh, one, and, uh, one and a half and uh, ten and a half. Uh, Adrian says he's got one. Hello, daughter. Okay, great. How, how old are they? Two children. Perfect. Okay. So I was I was hoping you'd be familiar with this topic. So six. Six children or six years old? <laughs> okay. Uh, great, great. Okay, thank you for your answers then. Okay. So, um, uh, anyways, I'm, I'm I'm going to focus on on uh, such such things today as we're going first to talk a little bit about pregnancy and how else we can say that somebody's pregnant, a woman is pregnant, uh, and then we'll uh, talk about uh, something that's called layette, which is a set of clothing, bath clothes, and other uh, necessary accessories for a newborn baby. Yeah, and uh, next thing uh, will be a newborn baby. Uh, and then an infant, a toddler, uh, so various stages of, of life of a child. Um, all right, all right, so uh, let's get started with being pregnant. Uh, any ideas how else we can say that somebody's pregnant, the woman obviously is pregnant? Any, any ideas? Mm -hmm. We can say, uh, here, he, oh, sorry, she's pregnant, or any ideas? No? No ideas. Well, we can say, let me help you a little bit, that uh, she's expecting. Look, in this example, my wife is expecting, which is a little bit similar to what we say in Polish, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh, I've got one answer. Let me check. Uh, have a baby. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, here's a little bit old fashioned and, and humorous expression to have a bun in the oven. Now, what's a bun? Does anybody uh, have an idea? What is a bun? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure you know the word oven, right? That's where buns are baked, actually. As a bun would be like a, a roll, yeah? So, uh, so <laughs> uh, to have a bun in the oven uh, is pretty, like, uh, pretty much refers like, to, to cooking, to baking a, a bun, yeah? <laughs> okay, let's have a look at an example. Uh, looks like she has a bun in the oven. Okay, another uh, another uh, informal one would be in the family way. Okay, like in this example, Emma's been in the family way for the past three months. Okay, uh, another one would be pretty much uh, informal and British English. Fregos. Um, wondering if you've heard that one before. Uh, as in the example, uh, what we didn't know then was that Linda is Fregos with our firstborn Tim. All right. Now, another expression which is obviously used, uh, not obviously, but is also used in Polish is to be eating for two. Sometimes we say that about uh, women being pregnant. Uh, one could argue if it's such a good thing, um, if, it's, uh, if it's a good thing actually, um, shouldn't it rather be, well, if you're pregnant, don't eat for two, eat twice as healthy, yeah? So don't eat twice as much, just twice as big. Uh, well, what is your opinion? Because uh, personally, I firmly believe in it, right? It's kind of hard to lose uh, all the kilograms uh, later. So, so, yeah, that, that, that's a very good idea, I think. Uh, okay, and one more expression when talking about a woman pregnant who is pregnant, to be due. Like, uh, when is she due? Or my baby's due in June, for example. Yeah, okay. So uh, let us see how much you remember. A short test. Uh, please use uh, chat to, answer, um, to try to fill in these sentences. So I didn't even know she had a in the other. What was that one? Do you remember? That was uh, like this humorous old fashioned one. A bun. Very good. Bravo. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, what about this one? Two weeks. It has been in the uh, fur way for the past three months. Um, what's thing if you remember? Uh, yeah, maybe family, Pavel again, and Malgrata, thank you. Uh, right, so she's been in the family way for the past three months, very good. Now, when I was, I had to let my heels go flip-flop, so no heels anymore for me, just flat flip-flop and comfortable ones, Fregos, okay, yep. And the last one, 
and my baby is sure you remember that one G. Thank you, Michael Shatter. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think I saw you in the press one today. <laughs> I'm so happy you decided to join it again. Uh, all right. Yep, Eva, thank you very much. Okay. All right, let's go on. So um, it's time now, probably, to get ready for a new member of the family and prepare something that we call Liette. Yet, which is a set of clothing and also other accessories uh, for our newborn baby. So, can you help me with the first one on the left? What is it? It's actually a word we use in, uh, in Polish as well. Yes, it's like a coverall, all in ones, uh, one piece garment. Uh, what is it? Do you know? Oh, I can't see any answers. Okay, let me help you. Rompers or a romper suit. Yeah, this one. Now, uh, what about what about this uh, piece of uh, cloth or, or plastic that uh, that we fasten around a baby's or child's neck? Yeah, um, to, uh, and it keeps uh, the clothes clean uh, when baby's eating. Does anybody have an idea what that is? No answers. Okay, let me help. A bib. Okay. Now, and what about this one on the right? Yeah, so that's kind of like a t-shirt, but it's uh, with some extension below the waist with some snaps of Velcro that um, uh, that allow it to be closed over the crotch. Oh, I've got some answer here. Yeah. But yeah, okay, it's it's uh, uh, a body, a body, infant body suit. Yeah, or a onesie actually. In American English, could be a onesie. Yeah, a nice one. Okay. Now, what else? We probably would like a baby, um, well, you know, not to scratch itself with, with its fingernails. So we'd, uh, we'd perhaps like to buy uh, these, uh, some kind of gloves, yeah? Or, or scratch mitts, yeah? Mitt, mittens, uh, like, like gloves, yeah? That we put on our baby's uh, hands and stop, um, stop him scratching himself. Okay. Now here's a very uh, nice thing, yeah, well, some kind of shoes, but there is another another uh, name for it, booties, yeah. So that would be some infant knitted or crocheted uh, socks, basically, yeah. Uh, very sweet one. Okay. Now, what else we might uh, want to buy is, uh, yeah, I know, the baby's got something funny in its face, but don't you worry about that. What we are uh, sort of want to focus on is this kind of blanket um, uh, or some similar cloth that, um, which tightly restricts uh, yeah, any movement of, of the limbs. Um, and this is, what is this? Sweatling blanket. Yeah, so we kind of wrap our baby uh, in it with a sweatling blanket. Um, all right. Uh, well, another essential thing, having gathered obviously all the uh, items of clothing uh, or not, another essential thing uh, that we need to acquire for a baby is this a place where it will rest. Yeah. So, uh, and here we, we see a small bed with high barred sides. Uh, some of them can be removed. Yeah, when they is older, they uh, then they can. Um, Simply leave uh, this, this bed on their own. Uh, any idea what this is? What do we call it? Uh, anyone? Oh, I've got one answer from Eva. Uh, almost. Eva, let me uh, just show it to you. And the others. It's a crib, right? So you are close, cot or crib. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Uh huh. Um, all right. Uh, well, you might uh, also want to equip yourself with something that you can carry that is portable. Yeah, like if you want to put your baby in it, uh, it can sleep in it. Uh, being uh, outside, you can simply carry it uh, around the house. It's portable. And this one is a bassinet or a carry cot. Yeah. Just just like this bed, previously a cot, but a carry one. Carry cot. Um, okay. So uh, preparing uh, a place where our baby will sleep is actually uh, extremely important. There are certain guidelines we, we would like to follow uh, or, not, or, or simply not do certain things uh, because of uh, something that's called SIDS, that which stands for Sudden Infant um, Death Syndrome, uh, okay, uh, also known as the Sudden Unexplained Death of a Child Less Than One Year of Age. Or more informally called cot or crib death. 
so uh, well, certain things we must uh, bear in mind, um, or know the reasons why why uh, something like that might happen. Uh, so, so we should simply remove pillows, blankets, and stuffed animals um, from the crib because the baby might uh, suffocate. Yeah? Um, well, another reason why uh, the syndrome might take place would be babies not sleeping on their back. I know that babies often like sleeping on their uh, bellies and their tummies, but uh, well, we should probably we should encourage them to, to sleep on their back. Um, well, another reason of the syndrome could be overheating. Yeah, so the baby could simply be uh, too hot uh, or bed sharing, which is simply uh, not sleeping with your baby. Yes, in bed. Uh, well, we're uh, after all much bigger than, than our baby, so it might be useful. Um, yeah, uh, well, having made sure that the cot is safe, uh, we can get our house even more child proof. Okay. And uh, we can buy such an electronic device that um, enables us to see or hear a child who's, uh, who's in another room, right? which is especially useful uh, when the parents sleep in another room yeah, than the baby. Anybody knows what it is? I mean, of course you know it, but what is it in, in English? Any idea? What do we call it? Oh, I've got an answer. Electronic nanny. Very good, yes, because that's like a direct translation from Polish. In English, it's a baby monitor. Yeah, anybody has used it? Useful? Any any uh, experience here? Anyone? Um, not really. Well, I'm I'm, I'm sure it's it's uh, it's a very useful thing. Um, okay. Well, all right. Let let us go on simply then. Uh, another, uh, we want to get more accessories now. Uh, what is this? Yeah, some kind of, well, I suppose we could call it a table that we put on our, uh, on the bed, on, on the cot, yeah, that our baby sleeps in. And we change it, we can change it. So this simply is a baby changing table, yeah. We're changing, uh, our baby's clothes, but also this. What's this? I'm sure you know that one. Come on. Use chat to tell me what is this? I'm sure you know the word. No? Diaper, thank you. Well, just the spelling's a little bit different, but uh, very good, Pavel. Uh, let me show it to you. It is a nappy in British English or a diaper in, in American English. Probably uh, even more popular the British one, yeah? Diaper. Uh, obviously, there could be cloth diapers as well, uh, or, or nappies, uh, which are reusable uh, ones made from natural fibers or man-made um, materials or a combination of both. I don't have a picture of it here, but, but I'm sure you know what I mean. Reusable ones, right? So cloth diapers or nappies. Uh, well, obviously we'll want to uh, wash our baby and uh, so we need to buy, oh, that's not a very difficult one, or surprising, a baby buff tub. And it's probably nice to, to get one of those, which is the hooded towel, so simply a towel with a hood for our baby. Um, yeah, okay, another thing, another thing we, we would uh, probably like to, um, like to get uh, it's something that we'll uh, put our baby in and bring it home from hospital. I'm sure you know what it is. Uh, any suggestions here? Yeah? Don't be afraid. Use chat to tell me. What is this one on the left? No? Nobody? I'm sure you know it. But okay, let me show you. It's a simply baby car seat. So, so nothing uh, very, very surprising, I suppose. Uh, or a child safety seat. Yeah, that, that's another uh, word you can use for it. Now, the one on the right uh, probably is for older children. Uh, not as safe, uh, which is simply a booster seat. Yeah. A booster seat. All right. Well, uh, what next? Well, we'll obviously want to take our baby for a walk. Yeah. Uh, and the first carriage, uh, a four-wheel uh, carriage uh, pushed uh, by a person on foot is, what is it? Any ideas? Any, any at all? What could that be? No? no ideas? Okay, let me help you. It's a pram. 
uh, and what about uh, the next one? Uh, if when I try starting, yeah, uh, then we can use something uh, looking like that, yeah, which is basically um, well, like a folding chair on wheels. So any idea what that is? Anyone? Uh, and again, we have uh, oh, oh, sorry, 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 I've got one. A truck. Uh, well, uh, perhaps not not exactly a truck, but it could be a stroller. Yeah, like more uh, American English, and a pusher in in British English. Yeah, it's easy to remember because you simply uh, push it. Yeah, so a push chair, and the baby sits in it. Yeah, simply. All right, all right. So uh, another thing, another thing we might want to buy for a baby is uh, is a toy or toys. And probably one of the first ones we should we should get is a, a rattle. Yeah, so the one which makes a noise like well some of them like a series of knocks, uh, which is very stimulating for a baby. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, well we'll either have to buy all of these things or um, or some of them. Alternatively, we might throw a party. A party to which friends and relatives will simply bring gifts uh, for the child, uh, the child to be to be born. So we so we have a party. Any idea what the name of such a party is? Uh, yeah. Oh, I've got one answer. Baby shower. Perfect, Pavel. Yes, that's exactly what it is. A baby shower. So see, in, uh, it uh, it differs in various cultures actually because it might celebrate either the delivery. Or expected birth of a child. Uh, well, in in this case, you can see in the picture probably it's the um, it's the former one because we see some pictures of babies there, so so probably the children have already been born. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, we've had a lot of new words, so let's practice. Uh, the first one on the left is a bib. Which picture does it go with? Any idea? Uh, not that difficult. You said uh, we can number them. Picture number one, number two, number three. Which one? Number two. Yes, in the middle. Very good. Uh huh. What about a push chair? Remember that one's really easy. Yeah, a chair that we push. Uh huh. Number one, Pavel. Thank you. Yes. So well, obviously a cot or. A crib, if you remember, is is number uh, three or the next one. And one more exercise. I've actually repeated myself. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, but I'll start with the first one: a portable seat for an infant or a small child that attaches to a car seat and help the child safely is. Which picture would that be? Again, number one, two, or three. Number three ever. Perfect. Thank you. That's exactly what it is. Now, a small portable bed for a baby. A small portable bed for a baby. Portable means you can carry it. Aha, uh -huh. let me check the answer. Number two, great Pavel, great Eva. Uh, number two, it is. I'm wondering if you remember the name of it. It was a bassinet or a carry cot. Yeah? Uh, let's see. Uh, and, yeah, well, obviously, the last one's number one. Uh, a folding chair on wheels in which a young child can be pushed in. So that's a push chair. Right, sorry, I've repeated myself here. Um, all right. So, so you did remember. Great. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, so nine months later, uh, the baby uh, has finally decided to appear to, to leave its mum's belly. And, and so what starts is labour. Okay. Uh, you can say uh, a woman is in labor, as in this example, my wife was in labor for eight hours before finally giving birth to a girl. Oh, yes, that's a tremendous effort. It's if it's spontaneous labor or spontaneous delivery. Uh, do, do you know what is meant by that? Spontaneous labor or delivery? Please chat to tell me. Uh, any idea what that is? So it's the one that happens on its own without requiring doctors to use any tools yeah, to help uh, pull the baby out. It's sort of natural. As opposed to, as opposed to uh, cesarean section or delivery 
or C section. Yeah, so that is uh, uh, the use of uh, well, surgery to deliver a baby. Uh, simply, yeah. So two two kinds of, of labor. Um, all right. So uh, yeah. A baby's born. This kind of baby that's just been born. It's called a newborn or a baby that has just been born. Obviously, we want to uh, inform all the world that <laughs> that it's arrived, that it's that it's been born. We want to announce it, make an announcement. How can we do it? Uh, here is an example. Jessica and Jordan Barker are happy to announce the arrival of Alexis Barker, March the fourteenth, two thousand and eighteen. Seven pounds six ounces, nineteen inches. Ah, how much is that? Seven pounds six ounces. Uh, any vague idea? <laughs> how how much does the baby weigh? Hey, eh? do you have have any idea? Seven, well, a little bit over seven pounds. So, how much uh, does the baby weigh? I'm sure you have an idea. Anyone? All right, you're checking some. Uh, uh, you're checking now. No, uh, you can say it's a bit over uh, three kilos. Yeah, how about 19 inches? How well, tall long is the baby? 19 inches? Any idea? Mm, that's even more difficult. <laughs> oh, well, that took us 48 centimeters. So a pretty regular baby, I'd say. <laughs> okay. So, uh, the baby's been... And now, probably uh, one of the most desirable things uh, to happen next is for the mother to start breastfeeding. Yeah. Uh, let us perhaps revise uh, how we can use it as a verb or in a sentence to breastfeed, plus plus participle of it being breastfed. Uh, so let's see how we can use it in a sentence. I breastfed my son until he was two years old. Okay. Um, well, at that time, it's probably it's probably wise to think of something like this, which is a nursing pillow, yeah, uh, because it just uh, makes it more comfortable uh, to nurse the baby, yes, or to breastfeed. Um, but what if the mother uh, cannot uh, feed her baby with her own milk? Well, there is a solution. Uh, it could be um, something that we call infant formula in American English, or simply baby milk in, in British English. Well, it's healthy, but, uh, uh, but for some it's the only possibility. Uh, and uh, speaking of which, uh, look what I found. Um, look what I found. A very thought-provoking, I'd say, piece of text in a, in a book about babies and uh, child care that was published in 1946. So, uh, uh, let's read what it says. It says, some Fathers have been brought up to think that the care of babies and children is the mother's job entirely. Completely. This is the wrong idea. You can be a warm father and a real man at the same time. Of course, I don't mean that the father has to give just as many bottles or change as many diapers as the mother, but it's fine for him to do these things occasionally. He might. I hope this made you laugh because it made uh, me laugh. I, uh, having read it, I thought it was like uh, ridiculous. I mean, uh, to think a father cannot take care of a baby as much as a mother. Uh, 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 right, but well, as I said, it was uh, over half a century ago, so uh, <laughs> luckily um, things have changed since, since then. Um, well, any comments? Any comments from you? What do you make of it? Uh, uh, you don't you don't want to comment. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's simply go on. Well, as you know, the um the title of this webinar was supposed to be uh, "Baby Don't Cry" because babies do cry. They do cry a lot for various reasons. And if it's your firstborn, um, it might often be really hard to guess the reason, whether they are cold or maybe hungry or sleepy or uh, whatever uh, the reason is. So uh, think what you want. Maybe I'm a bad mother. 
But I reckon that the thing the baby's uh, holding in its mouth, it's got it in its mouth, is like one of the best, oh, one of the best inventions ever. Is it? Any idea? What do we call it? The thing in, in uh, the baby's mouth, which is, you know, uh, simply um, a rubber, plastic or silicone nipple uh, given to a child to look uh, upon. Uh, Aha! Uh -huh. Let's see, there is one answer here. Thank you. Oh, great, great. Thank you very much, Margareta. Uh, it could be that one, uh, but there are more uh, perhaps popular ones, which is the pacifier in American English or dummy in British English. Yeah, okay. Uh, very helpful, very useful, but also very addictive, as, as we know well. Yeah. It, it's hard later on to make them stop eating. Um, all right, all right. Uh, well, uh, when those teeth start coming out, uh, when the baby uh, starts seething, yeah, which might be uh, actually very painful for babies, we might want to get them uh, something uh, looking like, like this, a teether, um, which could have obviously various shapes and forms. Uh, it could even uh, have a shape of a, a toothbrush, yeah, that's called an infant toothbrush. Uh, but it certainly helps. Yes, children can simply um, quiet it, and and it helps them um, with the pain they, they feel. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, so our baby is growing. Yes, and it's it's it becomes an infant. Uh, an infant uh, is a human child from birth to the end of the first year of life. Okay. Uh, so so that's like another stage uh, in its life. Yeah. Okay, so before we go on, let's see how much you remember, and let's try to fill in these sentences. Newborn babies are often taken away from their mothers shortly after birth, which makes it impossible for them to be, you know, for the children to be, uh, the first letter of the word we need here is B. To be, uh, let's see, rest, ah. Uh, Yes, just careful with the form. Last form of breastfeed is breastfed. Yeah, like from feed, feed, fed, fed. Uh huh. But but yeah, uh, good idea. Now, infant mm, is a substitute for breast milk for feeding infants. What the? Oh, I've got some answers. Let's see. Formula. Perfect. Very good. That's good. Next one. A rubber or plastic object or silicone one for a baby to suck on is a. Who knows? Just talked about it. Dummy, very good, Pavel. A uh hard -huh, dummy or a uh, pacifier, if you remember the American one. And when babies start to teeth, you can uh, you can give it, or you can give them. Oh, sorry, no, you can give it um, a, a. Oh, sorry. Uh, this this actually isn't correct. When babies start to teeth, you can give uh, them right. Obviously, uh, a what to bite on and soothe his or her pain. Can give them a teaser. Thank you, Pavel, again, of being very active. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, all right, so all the time our baby grows and progresses at his or her own uh, rate, between six and ten months, uh, we can expect our offspring to start crawling, moving uh, on all fours, we can say. Yeah? And actually, before it happens, uh, we must make sure our house, house is safe yeah, for the baby to, to crawl, move around the house uh, safely. So before your baby starts crawling, cover all unused electrical sockets with outlet plugs so that it uh, simply cannot put its finger uh, or any other object into it. Uh, keep cords out of baby's reach. Yeah, you never know what they can uh, do with that. Uh, another thing, uh, use protective padding to cover sharp edges and corners, like uh, one of the coffee table. Uh, okay. another, uh, another thing is use safety latches on cabinets and doors so that they wouldn't, uh, would not put their hands in, in between the door and the door frame. Uh, and the door is uh, shut, yeah. Um, what else? Store all medicines, cleaning products out of baby's reach well, for obvious reasons, yeah. And also, uh, same applies to house plants. Keep them out of baby's reach as well, because some plants can poison or make your baby sick. Simply. Um. All right.
Right. Uh, so, uh, right. So, our baby has started crawling. It's been doing it for, for some time. Between 9 and 12 months, uh, well, most babies take their first steps and are walking well by the time they are 14 or 15 months old. Yep. So they become more independent, uh, at least in that way. And soon we'll encourage them uh, to use, stop using napkins and start uh, oh, using the toilet. Uh, perhaps before using a actual toilet, they will uh, they will use a, a kind of bowl, right, used by uh, children as a toilet, which is a potty and so we can we can actually start potty training and the child can be potty trained but at what age should a child be fully potty trained what do you reckon what are your ideas or experience what i've read is that healthy children aren't physically and emotionally ready to start using a potty until they are between 18 months and three years old uh and yeah let me see what your answers are four two and a half okay so uh well quite a difference then well most parents start the training when their children are between two and three years old they say yeah so it all depends mm -hmm. well uh well definitely at this age our child is no longer an infant uh but a toddler that's how we refer to a child, uh, well, especially one who's learning, has recently uh, learned to walk, and a little bit older. And that's when real fun starts. I've actually um, found a few quotations uh, perfectly describing uh, what toddlers are capable of. Um, for instance, it takes them two hours to put their shoes on, yet they appear to be able to open four apps and delete photos on your phone and make some international calls in 12 seconds flat. Ha! Huh. Has it ever happened to you? Yeah, perhaps it's <laughs> not so wise to give them phones uh, at this age, actually. Uh, and, uh, a two-year-old is kind of like having a blender. They don't have a top for it. Yeah, so imagine putting some vegetables or fruit into a blender, but not putting... Uh, a lid on it with a top part, yeah, and, and obviously when it when it works and starts operating, we would have a huge huge mess in a, uh, yeah. So uh, toddlers can definitely be messy and crazy and rebellious and uh, and fun loving creatures, yeah. <laughs> um, well, uh, laughable as they are, finally it's time. Uh, well, for a mother, uh get back to work yeah so uh some of us do it earlier some of us do it later but it's never easy to leave your uh, your baby in the hands of yeah exactly whose hands would it be your mother your grandmother your grandparents or perhaps you opt for a babysitter or any well which is never uh the uh, least expensive uh solution but if you can afford it why not uh, well, perhaps uh, you'd rather send your um, kid to to another to a place uh, simply where children and babies are taken care of while uh, the parents uh, are at work, which is a nursery for the youngest ones. Do you know any other name for it? Nursery is just one uh, one term. Perhaps you know any other one. Nursery? Yeah. Uh, no, not really. Let, let, shall I help you then? Okay, it could be a daycare or a daycare centre or even a crash in British English again. Yeah, crash. Uh, and when the child gets older, it's three years old, we can send it where? I'm sure you know that one. All oh, right, I can see some answer here. A kindergarten, of course, just careful with the spelling, Daniel, because it's a kindergarten. Okay, so there's C not, it's not a garden, it's, it's a kindergarten for some reason. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, going to kindergarten is, is an important step for, for your child, yes, as you know, they will grow socially and emotionally there, they will develop um, their language and motor and communication skills, uh, what's most important, and, uh, yeah, so the benefits are, are simply numerous, it's, it's very important to enjoy 
All right, all right. So, uh, so much about our children. Now over to you. I'd like you to think about your childhood when you were children, and answer these questions now about your uh, about yourself. Yep. So, but first you have to choose the right preposition. So, what about the first one? Who brought you up or down? Let's see what is your what your answer is. Up. Thank you, Pavel and Carol and Daniel. Very good. Yes. Who brought you up? Well, who brought you up? And what does it mean? Uh, yeah. To to bring up a child would be to look after it until he or she becomes an adult. So, who brought you up? Was it your uh, grandmother or grandparents or just your parents? Another one, who told you off or apart when you were naughty, you know, when you were misbehaving? Is it off or apart? Meaning, criticize somebody angrily, yeah? or something wrong with uh, with them. Any ideas? Who told you off or who, who told you apart? Oh, let's see what your answer is. Apart. Ah, uh, well, no, sorry. Who told you off? So, uh, so, sort of criticized angrily, yeah, because you, you were naughty. Uh, who worried for you or about you when you went out at night? Uh, what's your answer? About, about, uh huh. Let's see. Who worried about you? You were right about you when you went out at night. Well, obviously, it would be your parents or your mother yeah, in particular. Um, uh, uh, Magda also about very good. It occurred off or for you when you were sick. Uh, let's see. Off. Uh -huh. Well, actually, it is for. Who cared for you when you were sick? Let's see. Now, who took care of you? Yeah, you can see who took care of you, but who cared for you? So that's, that's actually a thing. Uh -huh. uh, off and for. Two answers. Maria was right. Okay, another one. Uh, who yelled at you or for you when they were angry with you? Yeah, to yell at someone. To ah, oh, sorry, I think I've just helped you. Uh, at yes, Carol, thank you. I just think I just told you. So who yelled at you? So shouted and talked loudly at you when you were when they were angry with you. Uh, maybe it was your brother or sister. Yeah, possible. Uh, okay. Now, who looked through or after you when your parents were out? Ah, oh, let's see your answers. After, okay, now you're sure. And this one's very good. Okay, who looked after you when your parents were out? Maybe a babysitter, or, or maybe a neighbor, or, or your sister, brother. Another one, who tied it up or out after you had played with your toys? Was it uh, you, yourself, <laughs> or your mother? Uh, okay, let's see what your answers are. Uh, I think most, most of you say up, so up it is. Yes, who tied it up? And last one, who talked you in or away at night? Ha! Huh. What does that one mean? Uh, and what do you think? Is it in or away? That would be to put a child into bed and make sure they are warm and comfortable by covering them well. In, Malkujata says in. So, it must be in then. Okay, who talked you in at night? Well, probably your mom, wasn't it? Okay, well, you don't want to answer my questions, but um, well, next week you'll get all these, uh, all the words, all these exercises um, uh, from us, so, so then you can ask these questions. Yeah, uh, that's actually all I've put for you today. I hope um, it's been a good opportunity for you to, uh, well, at least revise or maybe learn some new vocabulary about babies and uh, children. And uh, if, on the other hand, you feel overwhelmed, uh, that there's been too much information, do not worry, because as I said, next week you'll receive all the materials with all the new words, expressions. So, so that's all for me. And just to finish off, I, uh, I'll show you a very short video uh, showing us what children are. Capable of how funny they are. Just a quick one. Enjoy.
Well, that one was really easy. <laughs> I totally love them. <laughs> In spite of all that. See the vine with uh, the sky meets the sea. Night. Thank it you. Calls Thank you. Good me. night. <laughs> now, can you tell Carly to feel better? Oh. <laughs>